President Trump did a rally in Georgia for David Perdue and Kelly Leffler. These are the two Republicans who are, of course, in the, the runoff election in Georgia. So he gave us a moment here that's honestly too good to be true because he accidentally summed up the modern conservative movement. So don't listen to my friends. Just go out. Just go out. And you know what they're saying? They're saying, we want you to fix the system. We're going to fix the system. But the system will be fixed when these people get in. They'll get in and we'll fix the system. Because we're all, we're all victims. Everybody here, all these thousands of people here tonight, they're all victims, every one of you. Completely and utterly embracing the victim mentality. Now, anybody who's been involved in politics for more than a year knows that this is a, a recurring theme that the right often accuses the left of. That, you know, your problem is that you don't own the idea that you're an individual and you can overcome and hard work can get you from point A to point B. You stupid lefties always embrace the idea that you're victims. And you'll have to split everybody up into different groups, whether it's gender groups, race groups, what have you, and define certain people as the oppressor and the oppressed and define entire groups as victims, disregarding individuality, disregarding evidence to the contrary. This is a, a right-wing narrative against the left, and it's one of the things that has helped the right gain traction, particularly online, over the course of the past maybe five to ten years. And then Donald Trump just comes out and says it. I mean, listen, psychological projection is a real thing, and you see it all the time in politics. And he's, he's letting the mask slip here. He deeply believes in this victim narrative, this victim mentality. And there's a giant contingent of the right that wholeheartedly embraces this idea. Even though they accuse the left of playing the victim all the time, they cannot wait to play the victim. Whenever they can, for any reason whatsoever, they'll grasp on to nothing at all. So just some examples. Remember the war on Christmas? Christmas is so popular that I remember reading this years ago. It's only like 70 to 75% of the country, um, you know, describes themselves as Christian. But it's over 90% of the country that celebrates Christmas. So not only is there not a war on Christmas, all Christians in this country, by and large, celebrate it. And then you have even people who are not Christians celebrate it. Over 90% of the country celebrates Christmas. There's so not a war on Christmas, to steal a joke from Jon Stewart, that it's eating other holidays. Have you ever gone to the store before Thanksgiving even happens and you see some Christmas decorations up? I've seen that. Well, that we're not even we're already going to start celebrating Christmas and putting up the decorations before we even have Thanksgiving. I mean, that's like that's mind-boggling to me. I think that makes no sense. I think that's crazy. So, obviously there's no war on Christmas. The idea that there's a war on Christmas is ridiculous. Why? Cuz every now and then somebody says happy holidays or says, "Hey, maybe to be more inclusive, you want to say happy holidays to look out for that, you know, 5%, 10% of the population that's not necessarily uh, you know, celebrating Christmas, that's a war on Christmas? That just seems like common courtesy. And who really cares whether you say Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays? I couldn't care either way. It's just stupid words. Like, it's whatever. But they grasp onto that to play the victim. To say, like, traditional values are under attack. You're not accepted as you are in this country anymore if you're a traditional conservative. Um, the new one is actually Charlie Kirk was saying there's a left-wing war on Thanksgiving. We covered that story. And I think his argument was something along the lines of Thanksgiving is a joyous holiday because you're giving thanks for stuff and the left doesn't want people giving thanks for stuff because if they're giving thanks, then they're happy and we need people upset so that they'll do the revolution. This is an argument he's making. How long have I been involved in, in left-wing politics to one extent or another? The idea that me and other like lefty hosts are having conversations behind the scenes and we're like, obviously we got to stop the scourge of Thanksgiving because it's getting in the way of our political ends. It, beyond ridiculous, beyond ridiculous. Another example of like, we're victims is this anti-mask fervor in the country. 
the idea that having a mask mandate, being told to wear a mask, is some sort of evil, tyrannical, dictatorial move, it's like, I really file that almost under the same category as wearing seatbelts, you know? And is is there, like, some some movement? Maybe there is. Who knows? Of, like, the idea that there's laws in favor of wearing seatbelts, it's total overreach of government authority, and this is, like, a tyrant and a dictator, and this is fascism, and... I mean, maybe some people think that, but obviously most people say, I look at that as, like, a basic safety regulation. Something that has tremendous positive upsides with really not that much restriction on your freedom. Mask is like that, except just so much more necessary immediately, right? Because we've seen the studies. You could save hundreds of thousands of lives if everybody wore masks. But there are people who act like, no, this is tyrannical. And so that there, they play the victim as well. I have a right to be insanely reckless and put everybody else in danger and take action that'll lead to hundreds of thousands of more people dying. They're playing the victim in that situation. In my mind, I think the victims are the people who are dying from COVID. Call me crazy. Call me crazy. I think those are the victims. The people who are getting COVID, I think those are the victims. But this is that new conservative mantra, man. And a lot of it also just has to do with the culture war in general. You know, they are so knee-deep in that culture war that Donald Trump can behind the scenes, actually not even so much behind the scenes, in front of the scenes... He passes giant tax cuts for the rich and corporations. That's what Trump did. That's what Trump did. 83% of the benefits of that tax bill went to the top 1%. He slashed the corporate tax rate. He deregulated Wall Street. He destroyed the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. That bureau looks out for average working Americans more than any other part of the government, arguably. And he destroyed that part of the government. That's what he's doing as he throws red meat to the base on the issues of the culture war. He's distracting you with the stupid culture war. You know, you're, you're arguing over gender pronouns as Wall Street is hosing you and screwing you. So, it's this victim mentality that really makes the tribalism peak. And makes the, the, the far right feel like closer together in this existential battle. And, um, you know, it works, man. It works. Playing the victim, whether it's on the right or on the left, it's a powerful thing that lands with a lot of people. But it also happens to be, you know, from an outsider perspective, from a more objective perspective, you look silly. Like, it, it looks really dumb. So, are there instances where people are genuinely victims? Of course. Of course that's true. You know, the world's a complex place. Plenty of examples of that. But is Trump touching on something real here in terms of his movement and how victimized they are? No. I mean, I'll agree with Trump that, like, the media hates him and they're addicted to him in many instances. Sometimes legitimately, but sometimes not. Sometimes they attack him on all the wrong things and it's ridiculous, right? So I'll give him that, but you're the most powerful person in the world, literally. You're the commander-in-chief of the world's most powerful army, the most powerful army in human history. Spare me this nonsense about, oh, woe is me and woe is you, conservatives, who have basically gotten everything on your agenda has happened. Almost everything. Especially all these court appointments, these judge appointments. I mean, you guys are dominant. You're dominant. But they, uh, they like to get together and, and play victim and cry victim and further entrench themselves in their own silly ideology. And this is Trump doing what only Trump knows how to do. There's no other right-wing figure who's going to compete with this. If this guy runs in 2024, he's definitely going to win that primary in 2024. So, there you have it. It's the far right embracing the same kind of narrative that they say they hate when leftists embrace it.